My name is Yuri Olsha. I work for Red Hat. This presentation is about uh, eBPF iterators. I am assuming that the audience is familiar a bit with the eBPF. Uh, in a nutshell, it's technology in the kernel that allows you uh, to load a custom program uh, to the kernel, and this uh, and this program will be executed on uh, on certain points uh, in the kernel. So we have many many different uh, types of the program that we can load to the kernel. For example, for trace point, for K probes, for any other probes, and uh, many network objects. And eBPF uh, iterator is another object that you can uh, load the uh, program for. So it's another program type. As the name suggests, the program or the yeah the program allows you uh, to iterate uh, several kernel objects. Um, there is a support for uh, for some of them uh, built in uh, to the kernel, so you can iterate, for example, task. You can iterate uh, memory maps, uh, the files, and when you iterate uh, the objects for each object in the iteration, the eBPF program uh, will be executed. And in this eBPF program, you can actually choose, you can go to the object and choose whatever field of the object. So for example, if you are iterating task, you can go, you have the task struct and you can go to any field and send it to the user space where the user space can actually uh, do whatever he wants. Uh, currently, we are displaying, uh, but you can uh, you can choose what you want to do. So I have a very sophisticated diagram that shows uh, what I just said. So there's uh, uh, several objects that are allowed to be iterated that are uh, supported to be iterated in the objects through the uh, eBPF iterator. It's tasks, files, stacks uh, of the task, uh, BPF programs, BPF maps, and many uh, networking objects. Uh, basically, how it looks uh, from syscall point of view. Uh, let's say you are going to iterate tasks. All the tasks in the systems will be iterated. And if you provide a program, a program like this, uh, this program will be executed for every task object. Uh, there's a extra helper uh, for iterators, BPF sec printf, which works basically like printf helper. And so you have the format string where you can, uh, then you can specify anything that you would put uh, for the normal printf call. And you can go to the task object, which is basically the pointer to the task struct. And you can uh, you can dereference any field under the uh, under the task struct and send it to the user space. How it looks on the syscall level? So basically, when you want to load eBPF program to the kernel, uh, you first need to load the program. You need to execute the BPF uh, prog load syscall. Uh, here in this example, I'm actually using the uh, libbpf function, which is the wrapper for the syscalls. So you load the program, you got the file descriptor of the program. The program is verified in the kernel and the kernel provides you with the file descriptor. Then with the file descriptor, you don't create uh, the iterator itself, but you create the link layer, which is really helpful, I will show uh later on so you create another file descriptor which is uh, the link you specify the bpf trace iter and then you can create the iterator itself there's another syscall for the bpf iter create where you specify the specify uh the link and then you get the file descriptor and you can read uh, read it like a normal file and in this file descriptor, in this data for this file descriptor, you get all the information that was uh, that was printed in the in the eBPF program. So in the eBPF program uh, above, you see that it's basically printing the task field, 
and that's the information you will get all the PIDs in the system you will read in the read syscall and after you close it like a normal uh, normal uh, file descriptor. So that's one usage of the iterators. Uh, the next uh, usage is, is something which I really like, it's really nice. You can take the link layer file descriptor and uh, make something that we call pin, pin it to the file under the BPF uh, file system. So you take the file descriptor, you provide the file name, and the file will magically appear, appear uh, under the BPF uh, file system. So if you go to sys, fs, BPF, or wherever you have the BPF file system mounted, you will actually see uh, the file there. And if you open it uh, and read it, uh, for example, with the cut, uh, the iterator will be created and you will get the fresh data from the moment that you actually open this file. So this is a really nice feature. With the BPF program, you can prepare some debug output that you want to see. For example, well, seeing the pit is maybe not the best example, but you are interested in some task property. You prepare it to the file, and whenever you need it, if you do the cut on the file under the BPF uh, file system, you have the fresh uh, fresh data uh, from the from the system. So this is this is how it works in a nutshell. So it's a feature that allows you to to basically iterate several kernel objects, and it's quite fresh feature. So there's not too many uh, not too much documentation on it. Uh, the best documentation you will find is the BPF uh, self-test. It's probably the best source of information how to use any BPF feature because anytime, uh, anytime there is a, a new feature for the kernel to the BPF, it needs to have also uh, the test. Uh, so, and the test go to BPF self test, which is located under kernel sources in tools, testing, self test, BPF. Uh, so if you go there, you can see how the BPF is actually, is actually used. And if you are interested in iterators, you just display the files under the progs directory, uh, that have the iter in the name. And here in these files, you will actually get all the usage which is currently available uh, for the for the iterators so if you open one of those files you will see uh, code like this so this is basically a c code of the bpf program and you can see how you can actually get uh, get the tasks and get the uh, get the information from it and and print it back so this is one thing that you actually see how it's used and you see how it's written. Another, another nice thing is how actually to use this BPF cell test. And this is actually available uh, through new BPF tool uh, subcommand. BPF tool uh, is, is like helper tool for uh, many BPF tasks uh, under Fedora. There is a specific BPF tool RPM, so um, shouldn't be a problem just to install it. And if you actually manage to compile the BPF cell test, you will end up with many objects files for the iterators. And every each of these uh, object files you can load with the BPF tool iter pin subcommand and pin it to some, uh, to some file under the sysfs uh, BPF. So let's say uh, you want to see what, does, what is the BPF iter task stack.o doing. So you just run BPF tool iter pin and the object file and uh, the file name under the sysfs BPF and uh, the object will be pinned. And then you go to the sysfs BPF and get the file and you will actually get 
uh, you will get the result of running the iterator. So the combination of going through the BPF self test and using the BPF uh, iter pin is really nice. You can uh, you can check every uh, every example and how it's working. This example uh, displays the task stack uh, for every process in the system. Normally, you would go to the proc self stack. Uh, or whatever the name of the file, and uh, you would need to uh, do it or do it in the script. This way, you open just the one file, and you will you will have all the information. I have another example just to show that uh, how powerful well powerful it's actually with the printf you can do any any output that you that you actually want to the extent that you can mimic some of the proc uh, file system files. So here I'm showing the BPF ether UDP4 from the self-test and they are displaying UDP sockets and they are displaying it in the same way as if you open the procnet uh, UDP file. So uh, you will get, uh, you will get basically the same output and yeah, you can do uh, you can do much more with that. So this is like the lowest probably interface that you can get to the BPF self test. is it's the uh, it's the C uh, direct C interface together with the BPF tool uh, inter sub command. You can use it like that and and play with that. Let's go to the another eBPF ecosystem, which is the BCC. BCC is a set of libraries and tools that use uh, eBPF. As of now, or a few days back, uh, when I was writing the presentation, there is no tool yet that would uh, use the iterators. Uh, so not too much to play with uh, under the BCC, but there is actually support in the BCC uh, progload xattr function, which is one of the uh, library's functions to load the BPF programs, and it has the support to load the iterators program. So, so this is good. And there is also C++ support with really nice example on the on the task uh, iterator. But like from the high level point of view, still there is no tool yet that you could play play with. Let's move on to the BPF trace, which is even a little bit uh, higher level uh, than the BCC. But again, the support is not there, but good news is that it's in the progress. I will, I will show you how the interface will look like. Uh, currently, the support is being added for two iterators, the iter task and iter task underscore file. The first one is just the task iteration that I just uh, showed you in previous examples. So for every task, the program that you specify under BPF trace uh, will be executed. Uh, the task file uh, basically display every open file in the in the system together uh, with its uh, owner, with its owner, with the task. Of course, we can add uh, many more, and probably we will if there will be like people asking for that and if we see the need. But we are starting uh, with uh, those two. I have a few examples. Uh, first one, really easy. Uh, so you say BPF trace dash e iter task. Uh, the iterators are basically another. BPF trace event. So it will appear in the BPF trace dash L as another event. And you say uh, dash E, you specify the event, the iter task, and then you specify the program. This one, basically for each task that it iterates, it displays the uh, com string, uh, which is the short name uh, of the process and the PID for that. So Every time you execute uh, this BPF trace program, you will get the list of the processes in the system together with the PID. So really nice, but not, not too helpful. The task file iterator is um, 
much nicer in this regard. Basically, the program that you execute uh, for this uh, for this event uh, is called for every open so uh, file in the system. And uh, what we display in this program is that first I get the task, the context task. Oh, all the all the objects in the iterator under the BPF trace are referenced by the context pointer. So when I say that you were the reference, the task, you need to go to the context, uh, context and, uh, and the reference, the task, and then you can the reference any field. So in this example, I'm the referencing uh, the command field again, together with the PID. And as I said, the program also get all the open files in the system together with the task. So this task has, uh, this file open the file is basically the file kernel object so you can dereference it to any field uh, under this object and we have already support uh, for the path function uh, that if you dereference the uh, f underscore path on the file object and call uh, and use it as an argument for path function it will return the full path of the of the file so basically in this output uh, you will get all the open files in the system together with the task so kind of lso lsof uh, functionality uh, i didn't write it to this example but also uh, there's file descriptor available uh, to open uh, to, to have this information on the context so you can actually see uh, where the file is located, uh, which file descriptor uh, is the file. So actually this output is already useful. And of course, BPF trace adds the support for pinning, which means that you can prepare uh, the iterator and not use it at the moment when you prepare it, but store it uh, under this uh, CSFS uh, BPF uh, file. So in this example, if I uh, specify under another double colon the uh, CSFS BPF uh, file name, uh, the iterator will be created and pinned under the CSFS uh, BPF. So it will not be executed right away. You can see BPF trace writes program pinned to the file, and then you can open the file and, and display what's needed. So very nice. As I said, this is ongoing uh, process. There is a pull request, so if you are interested, I hope if everything goes right uh, and smooth, it could be there uh, in a matter of weeks. The, another thing I'd like to mention is that we will most likely use one of the iterators uh, under the perf because one of the, uh, one of the iterator basically iterate every memory map in the system which is exactly what we do uh, when we start perf uh, for system-wide monitoring. Uh, currently, we can do that. The uh, memory map iterator is there, uh, but at the moment we cannot make it parallel, which is uh, which is not faster than what we do in perf. But on the other hand, it's cheaper because if you go to the proc file system and read all the data by yourself. Every time you open proc file system entry, it uh, results in the kernel with extra memory allocated for the inode. So if you actually open this proc uh, maps for uh, tens of thousand processes, you can actually tell. So uh, we hope that this iteration with the iterators will be will be cheaper, but we need to make it uh, faster. We need to make it uh, parallel. So this is something with which will, what will come in the in the future. And last thing I want to mention, there's also a kernel config option, BPF preload, uh, which allows you to compile BPF iterators uh, to the kernel. So you can actually provide the BPF program under the kernel and compile it in. And after you boot the kernel, it will boot uh, with, uh, with several files populated under the CSFS uh, BPF. So that's also that's also useful.